The next name in the list is Dr. Jagdeep Singh Ji, and Master of Punjab Public School, Naba. Singh Sir has 30 years of rich administrative experience in the field of education and has been awarded the best teacher in the year 2001 by the Chief Justice of Rajasthan. A lot of awards on his name. Big round of applause. Continuing with this, Dr. Sarveo Chinayu Sir, Director, Patho Award School Aroli. Education from the USA, a master's degree in English literature as well as a Bachelor of Education degree from India. His teaching and academic experience is the following. 1978 to 1983 is a boom school, a wonderful work in the field of education. Big round of applause for sir, please. Can you have some more mics up on stage, please? Continuing with some more names. We're going to hope that we still keep you engaged for the 40 minutes. The people right at the back, uh, if we can, you know, if you want to get your coffee, then please settle down. People right at the back, if you want to please settle down. Uh, are you audible right at the back? Can people in the last row hear us? There you can hear us. Then people standing can also hear us. If you want to take, we also had another R coming, which was the L quantum. The rhythm of the algorithm was another R that got added to two. People right at the back, can you please set, settle down? Can the volunteers get people to settle down? It's slightly distracting. I think we'll wait for the audience to settle down. Can, can, can Sponius please ensure that uh, there is people who want to listen to a good conversation can listen to it? So we'll carry on in the meanwhile. So we've been hearing about the, the three R's of the four R's for the students and Dr. Swati Bofford was talking about how our teachers need to skill students better, they need to change their attitudes, they need to make them think, they need to make them ponder. And then she also talked about the problems that the teachers are facing. So in fact, ma'am, your session came at a good time because this is precisely what we plan to be discussing, which is three R's for teachers. Three R's for teachers, uh, for all of us, are A, remuneration. So how much money do we get? Is it adequate? Respect. Is there adequate respect for the profession? and reskilling. Because some of us had arrived when the three hours were the methodology and are now expected to teach in a world which is expecting a lot more from the time. So the three hours for teachers is something that we want to talk about here. Would there be a common consensus that they're all required? Can we get a raise of hands of people who believe that discussion around this makes sense? Okay. So now that the house believes that this is important, we're going to skip the theory of politics. It's been taken, agreed upon, that the three R's for teachers are important. And with my fellow panelists today, uh, I think we've had about 150 years of experience amongst all of us. Yeah, probably more. Yes, and of the 150 years, I think I've got that. I'm about 100 myself, so. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, what we are going to attempt is specifically talk about things that we can take home. No theory, no jnana. Things that people can take back with them to improve the lives of teachers in their own schools. Now, we do know that there are some people who are doing some very good work, and there are some people who are not doing such good work. While some teachers are on targets as well, some principals are on targets as well. Recently, I came to know of this file that a certain set of school principals are needing to maintain. It's called the gold mine file. The gold mine file. Now, the gold mine file has all the possible admissions that can come to school this year and next year. 
And one KRA of the school principal is to maintain and keep adding to the gold mine fund. I wouldn't name the gentleman I was speaking to, uh, uh, who was a school owner, who said, well, my problem is that if I train my teachers, no, they leave. <laughs> they have the certificate and then somebody offers them more money and they leave. In my mind, I'm thinking, imagine your problem that you don't train that teacher and the teacher stays. <laughs> so, what salary are we on? How much reskilling is happening? And if there is a correlation with the respect that we need from society. The construct, the societal construct that we're working in is actually squeezing us. It's squeezing principles, it's squeezing teachers, and that needs to change. So enough said from, from me and what we're going to do over the next 35 minutes is uh, my fellow panelists would do an initial two minutes, which would be 120 seconds of what they believe is the current situation and where do they see this going. And then we'll do a deep dive where each of uh, my fellow, uh, fellow panelists will specifically talk about one of these subsets. And if we still have time and the buzzer doesn't go, then we would want to open this to the house and take questions from the house. Does it sound like an agreeable format? Right. And in the meanwhile, nobody's going to serve coffee. So, I'm going to open this with Japrit sir. Only last week, uh, Japrit sir had cornered me, but he was the moderator. So I'm going to get back to him, sir. You're the first one in the line of fire. Well, they say you get the same coin what you have paid earlier. So, of course, I'm not there I am. I'm not going to gun to you, but because this is a very sensitive issue, what we are going to discuss today, and of course it relates to all of us sitting here. We are talking about three very important arts, and these arts have uh, now become very important for all of us who are with the education world. Uh, talking about respect, is respect an individual? It's a very wide concept. What is respect? Somebody's, somebody may say it's money, somebody may say it's success, Somebody may say it's how people relate to me. Is it related to remunerations? I get a certain amount, so I have to be respected more. Or is it a criteria only to fulfill one own demand? Third, reskilling yourself. Am I skilled that I'm paid to according to my skills and making the parameters of each skill equivalent to that amount? And more than that, we are talking then weight skills in our hand. We are teachers. We are masters. I mean that fourth hour. I say if we are talking about respect, we are talking about remuneration, we are talking about reskilling, let's talk about righteousness. Let's give that ability to the teacher. And then once that righteousness comes to a teacher, it becomes the more emphatic tool in the teacher's hand. Building of knowledge, economy in the country, and debating on the three R's. Let's take the journey ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, for her work has involved working with over 340 schools now, and thousands and thousands of kids. And she's had the experience, a bell-shaped experience of schools who are really well resourced to schools that don't have even the basic needs. Now, what's your take on the topic? So I think you're uh, looking at remuneration when you ask me what is it for. So if this is uh, something that every school leader here can tell, let me know, and just pick up your hand if that's true, that we feel there's an almost like crisis in terms of uh, intake. Uh, whenever we need to uh, look at employing somebody, uh, it's an incredibly diff uh, difficult task. And I, I know that, I mean, I've, I've faced it, I'm sure that all of you here in this room are in that same space. So, I mean, we really don't have an option. Uh, we, have to, we have to look at the fact that every single school actually needs to become a little mini um, training space, a professional development space. And uh, there, is, there is no option on that. We need to look at what is it that every teacher deserves to get. Uh, and we also need to look 
you whether that respect that we're talking about is earned or whether it's simply given because of position. So this is what I would say is, is sort of an over, overview at this point in time. So is it earned or is it given? Is it for the chair or the person who is actually in it? Then what would you like to add to that? Um, first of all, I'd like to throw in, but I spend my time very often traveling the world and talking to different ministries about um, evolving education and changing education. And there's one quote that comes to mind when you're talking about um, these three R's, and I compliment you on the three R's as well, and, and the fourth R that was introduced. Um, and it's a quote that comes from Andreas Schleicher, who is in charge over in the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in Paris, and they do the PISA testing of the 15-year-olds. And he states that an education system cannot be better than its teachers. That if you do not put emphasis back onto your teaching workforce and give them respect, remuneration, responsibility, um, that um, and redefining the skills that they need to teach, you are not going to improve the education system. So I compliment you on having those three R's. Um, I also have my fourth R that I would introduce, which I just uh, let slip there a second ago, which is responsibility. Because if you want to get a teaching workforce to be respected, you have to give them and empower them the chance to make decisions, to have responsibility to own what they're doing. If we believe that educators and teachers are skilled technicians, then they also need to be skilled technicians in deciding not only what they teach, but how they teach it in the classrooms. Because it should be the individual teacher should know their class best, should know their school best, and should know what the individual child needs in order for them to reach their full potential. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. So we are on five hours now. And, so, yeah, okay. So actually, it might not be a bad idea. Uh, in which case, can I come back to you in a little while, sir? Because we were hoping that you would do the coupling for us. I've actually been given a signal that we have slightly lesser time than we originally thought we have for this session, so we're going to snap it a little. Five minutes would become four. Uh, five minutes would become four. Specifically deep diving now in getting it right. We all agree that there is a problem. We all agree that there is a problem. Right. So now let's start with you this time. And initially when I did introduce her, I did talk about how she's got this spectrum of schools that she's worked with. Let's have the cat out of the box and on the stage. We would have actually put another chair, but the stage is a bit small. Let's talk about how much money do teachers make? Should they be making more money? And are there ways for schools in, exist, in their existing budgets to actually improve the situation for teachers in that space? Ma'am, you have four minutes. Okay, so I think Swati has made my life a little easier because she put that on the board clearly saying teachers need to be paid well. And I completely agree with you. Uh, but yes, uh, as I've been asked to uh, give you a figure, I know, I know teachers who work for 1,200 rupees a month. And I know teachers who, uh, who earn two and a half lakhs a month. And uh, you know, they all belong to the same country from different board systems in different parts of the country, but that's the, the re reality. And if you uh, were to ask me whether, you know, I look at remuneration only as that, that particular number or the salary package, I, I would definitely tell you that that's, there's more to it than just that. I think it's, it's about the, um, the business of a teacher feeling respected, acknowledged, heard, recognized, uh, which is also a part of that package. Uh, uh, a teacher getting uh, the right amount of workload is also a part of that package. So it's, it's not like, you know, you can't just say that I'm, I'm going to pay you um, uh, two and a half lakh so I, I sort of own you, like they sometimes do in the corporate sector, I think. But uh, yes, uh, because it's a lot of uh, very, very 
It, it is intensive work. People think it's really easy to be a teacher. It's not. And it is a profession that's completely abused by the idea that, you know, if I, you've got some spare time in your, in your day, you should go and be a teacher. So the first thing that happens in a, in a family when they have a crisis is the teacher gets pulled out because she's getting paid the least amount of money out of all the earning members in the family. And that's going to have an impact on the children in the classroom. Because that day, they will not have a teacher. It's going to have an impact on everybody in the staff room because you have to do substitutions for that person who's not pulled out by their family. So the minute you don't respect, uh, you know, through remuneration, a teacher, you have a very long-lasting impact on the education of the children. Uh, I've seen schools doing something, some very interesting ways of, of, uh, of balancing this out. Because, uh, like you said about school budgets, uh, a lot of schools will tell you that we don't, you know, the parents don't pay money. This is, you know, just about what we have. So that's and uh, 90 percent of our money goes into teacher salaries. So what they do do, and this is something that you you would definitely have noticed is they, they strike a deal with the teacher. So 1,200 rupees is what you get for being in the school, but actually you make 35,000 at the end of the day, in the evening, when you're doing tuitions, for the same children who don't pay fees in the school. Now this is the truth because tuition is a space that's completely unregulated. And um, you know, I mean, if we are all here looking at the elephant in the room, let's make life a little uncomfortable for ourselves by looking at these truths and saying, if this is what is happening, what do you think is going to happen to that same teacher in her, in her classroom? She's going to try and get all the children into her tuition class. So the quality of what you're delivering in your school is never going to be something that you're proud of. These kinds of deals don't, you know, they don't make sense logically because if a person is willing to pay for tuition, why are they willing to pay for fees? And that's where the, the leadership comes in. And I, I think that we always play safe. We say, should teachers be paid well or not? Because should leaders be paid well or not? Should anybody be paid, paid well or not? And do, does anybody in the system know why they are there, what they're meant to be doing, how they're supposed to operate? So let's, uh, you know, like I said, we played safe for 70 years plus. If we keep playing safe, we're never going to deal with the real issue. And it's time to bring those real issues out and say, what do we actually want to do? What sort of people do we think should be teaching the children? You saw what Swati said about you know, the, the need for the kind of teachers for pre-primary. Similarly, we need really high quality teachers for primary. We need very high quality teachers for middle school, which is the toughest part of running a school. Fifth, sixth, seventh standard, nobody wants to teach because they're terrifying at that age. And then you have 8, 9, 10, where everybody wants to teach because remuneration gets additional amounts because when you get your children to do a well in the tent, you get money. So it's all sort of part of the whole deal. So that's, that's really where we are. We are. We are unpacking the whole issue of what is remuneration? Is it okay to pay a teacher even a 6th pay commission or a 7th pay commission but to treat them like as if they just don't exist? to talk down to them, to pull them out of class, to upgrade them in, certain, in front of students, is that acceptable? Is that, you know, a lot of times people work for someone they respect. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. As a, as a school leader, this is something that I personally sometimes have a problem with. Where do you find the money? In our school, we've done it fairly simply when we do a budget the first thing that gets discussed is teacher salaries. Whatever is left is rest of the money. So, there is clear realization that making the school look like a seven-star hotel at the cost of not paying teachers adequate salaries is not going to lead to better learning. We could actually do with lesser facilities, but a more empowered teacher, and that probably in the long run would help us. Sean, moving on to you. Well, your work across, uh, you've now worked in four continents, five different countries, extensively worked with training, skilling, both of students and teachers. I'm sure there are things that you've picked up in different countries that maybe we can go back to our schools with. Certainly. Um, and the first thing I would suggest, and I know that I've spoken to a couple of people about this, 
is I'm a strong believer in mindset, that if you change somebody's mindset and have them understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, they then start to change their actions subsequently. You don't need to necessarily prescribe what their actions are going to be if you change their mindset. And by this, and I think it fits back into the reskilling conversation that you raised. Um, and in terms of the skills in reskilling, I think we had a very good um, uh, opening to that from the first two talks this morning. The reskilling that we're talking about is not delivering content necessarily. It's not delivering facts into the minds of our students. It's developing the skills that we know are going to be needed in this century and the next century. And they are the skills that will come up time and time again, whether we're talking about early childhood and kindergarten, or whether we're talking about being an entrepreneur. It's the skills of problem solving, of creativity, of um, communication, of teamwork, of having meaning in what you do. So one thing I've been stressing um, in my work is getting through the idea, and I think having principles in this room is um, essential because I believe that you are fundamental in raising these same conversations with your staff. It's raising the question about what's the purpose of school and why are you doing it? Education is not a content delivery system. It's not a factory. It is a child development and youth development system. And the skills of the educator and the skills of the teachers are in knowing what works for you and what works for you and what works for you and also what works for you in this locality or in this culture as opposed to a different culture. So you ask for a couple of specifics. One is, I think, fundamental. Have discussions with your staff about what is important and why they are in this job and what they're trying to achieve. Change their mindsets. The second thing I recommend is to actually give them, and it goes back to my fourth R of responsibility, empower your staff to make decisions. You don't need to wait for somebody from Mumbai to come and give you a professional development course. You don't definitely need somebody from Washington DC to fly in and give a one day workshop and fly out again. What you need is you need to empower your staff to learn from each other and give them the responsibility to actually make decisions themselves. Um, one thing I have found as I've traveled around the world, and you, would, you touched on it a little bit with the remuneration, it made me think about the case of Finland, and we probably all heard about Finland in the, the global rankings and how well they do. A couple of important things about Finland which I think can also be transferred to almost any other country. One, they are, teaching is the most respected profession in Finland. They are not the highest paid. They are paid well, but they are not paid as much as doctors or lawyers, but they are the most respected. And so remuneration is key, but it's not the only thing. They also have time, they have responsibility, they are encouraged to make decisions. Finland also, to go back to early childhood, has mandatory early childhood up to the age of seven. School, formal schooling, does not start until the age of seven, which typically is two years behind every other industrial industrialized nation. Um, and when you look at what the kindergarten is in Finland, it is the traditional meaning of kindergarten. We go out in the garden and we play. And then the last point that I want to make about, and hopefully ties this up, is they have a, an assumption that the best school for your child in Finland is the local school. The best school is the local school, because one, all schools should be equal and equitable, but two, your local school has local teachers who understand your local context, your local culture, and what's going on in your geography. 
So empower your staff to be the best school that that school can be for their students. Thank you. Thank you very much. Taking up my notes, what I was hearing from that is A, teachers need to be involved in the decision making of what professional development will happen. So basically doing a learning audit for myself, which gets added into the grand plan of the school. And this is a reality. When your old school students who are extremely fond of you, they know your passion. You are there as a passionate leader, you are a teacher. But when you ask them, become like me then, they don't want to be a teacher. And then we talk about respect. They respect me a lot. They don't respect me a lot because they, I'm a teacher. They see a human being in a teacher. They relate to you as a human being. I go back to certain schools and I see the teachers where they don't have skills. Forget about reskilling them. They don't even have basic nuances of running a class. My question to them is, what are you doing with these children? They are today's generation. They are the tomorrow's leaders. Everybody said they are going to be the global leaders. You with yesterday's skills are coming in today's class looking for tomorrow's generation. Wow. How can we ever match with those skills? You are not even ready to skill yourself with the 21st century skills what we talk about. Dealing with 21st century generation, getting your old networking systems Dealing with today's class, who's going to take you to 21st century and those children are only going to learn what the teacher will tell them. The role of a teacher may be constructed in the, constructed in the four hours, but first find a passionate teacher. A teachers are not born, they are born out of their passion. And if they don't have passion, they have no business to come into teaching. This is my voice, very strong. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. We primarily talked about the three hours of respect, reskilling, and remuneration. Does one follow the other? And if that is the case, then which one actually comes in the center of the room first? And what, to your knowledge and acquired wisdom over time, is the equation that we could possibly be working with? Some actionable that you could take back home. Okay, so thank you. Uh, good morning and... Uh, you know, I, I, first of all, I just want to look very quickly on two fronts, which is answering your question in a different way. First of all, you did see uh, Lakshraj this morning with his humility and respect, one and two sitting out there who taught him. Um, my family actually connects with this family in Udaipur for four generations, going back to 1935. And whether it's been my father teaching the previous uh, Maharana's uh, sports, or whether it's been playing with the current Maharana in the Rani Trophy team, just missing out on each other in the same uh, generation, or whether it's my brother teaching uh, the current prince. Uh, we did back a long time. And really, there's a sense of history and a sense of connect. But it's exactly that. It's a sense of history and a connect in the past. It has very little link to where we are heading and we are going in the future. All the introductions that happen, you see they all link to your degrees and your qualifications. No one ever introduced me with my first passion in love, which was sports and cricket. No one ever recognizes that I played cricket in three countries and I'm probably one of the only heads of institutions whom the management in every country has said, go, don't work, go out and play and get us trophies. Yeah. But it's never recognized. Because at the end of it, it's also always education. But education comes down to academics and degrees. So I'm going to answer this three hours, just develop on it. Everyone's taken the license of creating more hours. So I'm going to just recreate a modification of the skills. Lao Tzu, way back in the BCs in China, said, you need to let go of what you are to what you might want to become, or you might to become what you might want to be. You cannot change yourself 
unless you let go of something. I think that's the mantra that's been coming out from this morning, from Swati on bridge. If we sit with the baggage, I told you the buzzer will go off before I've started. Um, but please, can I have the buzzer operators give me the extra two and a half minutes I didn't get? Um, so to let go of what you are, we come down too hard on ourselves as educators. Every talk out here is what do we do with ourselves as teachers. When we talk about remuneration, why do we not talk about the remuneration that needs to come into schools to be able to do something better? What would the Darbar Hall be like without the chandeliers and the ambience and the money that's been put into it? It wouldn't have the grandeur. It's the same with the schools. Why do we not look like aesthetics and everything are equally important as remuneration of teachers? But where does that come from unless we are ready to pay more? So it's the partnership, the student, the parents, and the teachers. We come down too hard on ourselves, and the word is rewire. We all need to rewire ourselves. In 2035, he's also talking about, everyone's talking about, 75% of the jobs, that's what he's talking about, will not exist. So what are we teaching our students for? The known or the unknown? So, whether it's remuneration, many of us who started in a salary which was less than a thousand rupees were probably much happier. Now we may be getting in lakhs. We are more content. We are contented with what we have, but we may not be happier. So money alone is not the answer. So I'm going to wind up with just a simple mantra. All of us first need to stop coming down too hard on ourselves. We are doing a great job, considering the times and the pressures and the significant evolution that Adobe told us. We are rewiring ourselves all the time, and so do the teachers of tomorrow. But the rewiring is not just about skills or remuneration or any other art. It's about the folk use. You take a pie chart, like a pizza, pick up a slicer, and divide it according to the size of the slice you want. IQ, intelligence quotient. EQ, emotional quotient. PQ, passion quotient. And WQ, well-being quotient. And ask ourselves, what should a teacher rewire? Where is the priority? Is the IQ more than the EQ? When you have a crisis, like well-known school is facing right now, and I've studied in it, and he's taught in it, and the next principal is sitting there, are we talking about the EQ, or are we talking about the IQ of the school? Are we, what are we talking about? And so, it's really important that each one of us as an educator creates a pie chart, which is our personal one, our school's mantra, and decide how much of IQ, how much of EQ, how much of passion quotient, how much of well-being quotient. And please, let's not leave the parents out. You cannot isolate them, create a triangle. We need to work in partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Let me take you to live wire. I ask you a one-line question, you give me a one-line answer. Who wants to go on this one first? Okay, sir. <coughs> of the three R's that we talked about, respect, remuneration, and reskilling, which is the least important R for you? Remuneration. Honestly. Honestly. I'm speaking myself. Thank you very much, sir. That's loud and clear. Sir, what's the most important R for you? Respect. Without respect, there's nothing in life, on this planet, and in this profession. Thank you very much, sir. If of the three R's. A lot of remuneration given, but no respect in that space. And there are teachers who get less, but the amount of respect they get is what keeps them in the job and keeps them going. Thank you very much, my co-panelists. For the possibility of time, I am not getting to summarize this because I've been looked at as the guy who has to work at something, people can have a cup of coffee. 
God give me the courage to change the strength to accept the things I may not be able to change but above all God I seek wisdom to know the difference thank you very much educator be around over a cup of coffee and we'll be very happy and willing to answer some questions and to those people who I planted in the audience to ask me questions thank you very much for agreeing Big round of applause, please. Anurag sir. Dr. Chitpeet Singh Dean. And Sarvish Naidu sir. Big round of applause. Before we get off the stage, can I actually call Ravi back on the stage? And I want to make a special mention. No, 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 slowly, not yet. Not for what we are doing here and the way that we are doing this, but for the dream that a man could see that this could be done in this man. <laughs> Many congratulations to your team. This has been phenomenal. And you know, you have a problem at hand. You're going to make it bigger next year. <laughs>